Hello and welcome to the Echo Chamber podcast. My name is Tony Groves and today I'm one third of what I'm thinking might be our most uh, out there pod yet. Remember folks, the Echo Chamber podcast is a free-flowing conversation that may occasionally touch on mature subjects. Um, I want to thank our guests so far, Izzy, uh, Erica, Constantine and Ken. Uh, and I have to say, guys, thanks for all the feedback. We've had some great feedback in the last couple of weeks. And I'm joined as always by my co-host. Martin McMahon. Martin, how are you doing? Not too bad. How are you, Tony? And more importantly, it's my pleasure to introduce to you the, the head of the Late Late Show Band, the writer for Callan's Kicks, and the man behind the acclaimed comedy and economic festival, Kilconomics, <laughs> Mr. Paddy Cullivan. Oh, thanks very much. You give me too much credit there. Well, well, we are, let's, yeah. we're, Listen, listen. <laughs> But more, more, I want more credit. Thank you. <laughs> Two wannabe writers here. You're yeah. sitting with Paddy. And, yes. and, you know, we're delighted to have you here, and we're big fans of of of, of what you've done. Yeah. And Martin will tell you, Callan's Kicks is oh, it's it's like the it's the best political show. What would we say? It's 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 the most cutting political show out there. Yeah. Now, if only. If only there was a bit of comedy thrown in. Yeah. But we, re- we think it could go a lot. Oh, thanks very much. I yeah, really appreciate that. <laughs> it is political satire, you know. I was like, uh, but I do like to, you know, explain that, you know, satire is slightly different to comedy, you know what I mean? You don't slip in a banana skin on radio either, you know? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> the odd time. The odd time you can, but, yeah. But when it's too close to the bone, Paddy, you, do, you just don't know whether it's actually this. Look, we have, a, we have a real issue in Ireland that it's hard to write satire in a country that is beyond satire, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, it's just like everyday reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but I love what I love what Oliver has done because he's created these great, uh, you know, um, like he's brilliant, obviously at the impressions. And Pascal is a great character. We were so happy, let's say, when Leo became leader because we were worried about having to do Simon Coveney all the time, which is very <laughs> tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's just... he's a lovely fella, but it's just very flat. But compared to Leo, uh, well, the Noonan, Noonan had to be just a godsend. I mean. He was great, and the millions and billions were amazing, <laughs> and all of that <laughs> millions and feta cheese. And, you know, he had so much going on, and of course, feta cheese was my favourite. You know, he couldn't even pronounce feta. I love that. Yeah, you know? yeah, no. I, I you know, like we give, about, we give out about Trump and stuff like this, and bigly and all of that kind of thing. But actually, feta cheese is my favourite thing. Actually, you know, <laughs> sure, what do we what do we import anyway from there? Like, only oh, feta cheese, feta. Very good. Thank you. You're a big a big Twitter user, and you use Twitter quite a lot, and you use it very effectively. And I was just saying last week we were talking about the 280 characters. This week, nobody's mentioning it. We got used to it so fast. Yes, yeah, I, I kind of hated it, and I uh, I was annoyed. I was going to put out my protest. You know, I was going to say, "How dare you!" This this used to be. You know, brevity, 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 brevity was the soul of wit, and now I'm going. Go oh, great! I can do more. I can, I can just slag more people. Great! I can put more, put more well, crap in there. I, I'm getting lazier. I'm just looking at it going. I could take that word out, but you know what? Actually, what the hell, just hit the button. My, my problem is the reading. Yes. Uh, I am going to have to half my followers because honestly, or, or half the amount of people I'm following because. I just can't read anymore. Well, just... I sort of reached this uh, this optimal level where I'm following 3,000 people. And if something happens in the world, I know it's happening because I can't read anything. It's going so fast. Yes, that's true. That's true. So um... uh, now you're getting maybe two of these 280 on the screen, whereas before you had four little uh, 140s. And it is, it, look, I'm getting used to it. I kind of like it. Exactly. Yeah, it's okay. As long as, it's, you know, people have got to try and you know, fit, you know, be brief and be, uh, make every word count, basically, you know. The other great love of your life is mm. music. You're, uh, you're a musician. Yes, indeed, yeah, yeah. And unlike other mil- musicians, you can feed a family of four. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that took a lot of hard work. Yeah, no, music, I, I did music from, I, obviously, I went to Mount Temple on the north side, believe it or oh, not, was my school. Yeah, and, um, and you don't go to Fine Gael conferences and call for debt to be paid back and no, 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 store no, all your no, money offshore? No, no, and... no, no, uh, unless Donegal is offshore. But he has um, got a Lithuanian shopping centre. <laughs> sure. yeah, yeah. I have my eye on one. Well, I, I was looking for, I still haven't found what I'm looking for in that but regard. Yeah, I, boom, boom. But, yeah, sorry. <coughs> Um, music. We were no, talking no, about music. Yeah, no, but anyway, no. But Mount Temple was actually a great place for music. We had great teachers and stuff like that. So, and the, but after that, I went to NCD and I studied graphic design. So a lot of my design stuff on my shows comes from that. And but then, of course, when I left college in '95, I went straight into music then because there was gigs and actual available money as opposed to having to work for the man. Mm. You know, because a lot of apprenticeship back then still, you know, when you're trying to get into graphic design, tons of apprenticeship and come on and work for free. Actually, nothing's changed. Let's be honest. Um, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. 
Music was good, and then eventually, but we kind of went down a satirical road with the music as well. So influences would be like Frank Zappa, um, people like that, and I kind of loved Irish bands like Fatima Mansions and things like that, who had that little funny edge to what they were doing, as opposed yes. to this very serious stuff. You so know? you weren't Cactus World News or Talking Mad or any of that. No, but I no, I mean I loved Tin Lizzy. I loved the kind of cartoon element of that, and I loved. Uh, uh, you know, even God forbid, uh, Tonic for the Troops by Boontown Rats, great album. Mm. It's yeah, all been downhill for Bob. That, well, no, I like. Fine, <laughs> I have to say, I like the fine art of surfacing, and it's it's probably the best. For great, me, great album. The best yeah. Boontown Rats album. Now, yeah, I destroyed it because Bob's just ruined fucking did, everything. Nah, you, stop now. That's not fair. <laughs> did you hand it back? Did you go? Did you go into Dublin City? No. <laughs> still to this day, when I play piano in Lilies on a Friday night after the late late, I always play. I don't like Mondays, but. When I'm t- but I refer to Bob's documentary on Yates and how he called the rebels in 1916 ISIS so I do a version oh, of yeah, yeah. tell me why I don't like Easter Mondays <laughs> oh god um, and, and uh, but no no so anyway went straight into music after that did a lot of satirical stuff made two albums 2002 2004 uh, the Camembert Quartet music is War Camembert Quartet yes sell out. that's right met Ryan Tuberty and we became the house band on his own TV show Tuberty Tonight so we did that for five years and then when he moved to the Late Late we went there so uh, that's it's regular paychecks, which is unusual for musicians. It's great, really. great. January, February are amazing. Um, you've you've got to, you've been very lucky in that you've got to play with some some of the biggest names that are out there. Who, mm. who was the nicest? We'll say the the all around wholesome person that you met. Uh, well, I mean, funny like Billy Ocean, we did uh, suddenly with him with full orchestra things like that. You know, obviously Russell Crowe, everyone thought he was giving out to us, but actually he was great crack. You know, and he actually came up to the platform. Well, he's not really a musician. He is so. Uh, Ah, he's a good. He's a good. He, uh, he, he could, he could give do it an El He could do an El yeah, yeah. But anyway, he was good. But and honestly, the the one who blew me away the most, and he's not really a musician either, was Commander Hadfield when he came. Oh, and we did right. Space Oddity live oh, with him, yes. and he only told us we were doing it like twenty minutes before. But we did the entire arrangement, sax solo, the whole thing, and that was it's very a cool guy. I came across as a well, look, very the, cool guy. I mean, you're you're playing Bowie with an astronaut. Come on, how much better? <laughs> how much better can life get? Let's be honest. That, that was that was the high point. We we'll have to ask this one. Who was like the most insufferable? Oh wait, hang on. No, you gotta you very gotta tough. you gotta countenance that with with. with <coughs> Don't mention Jim Sheridan. He doesn't. He, he's, he's a lovely guy. Uh, Look, Jim Sheridan is a keyboard player in the band, folks. But also, same name as Jim Sheridan, director, and I love both of them dearly. Okay, <laughs> and that's the way it is. I actually, when I first got on Twitter, I thought they were the same person. Well, of course, but no. Well, Jim is obviously uh, amazing on Twitter and also amazing musician. So, uh, who is the worst? I I won't name anyone, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but um, let's say, uh, let's say the least musically adept generally are the ones who are the most um f- uh, let's say nervous and make it a little bit of a uh, make a little bit of a difficulty when we're more playing you know so what I mean? you must be a lover then of x factor and stuff that must just blow your mind it's amazing um uh, i think i mean i think there's nothing better in life than just buy like a crate of below cost wine and sit in on a saturday night a and, watch, of wine. and watch music and all your dreams being shattered uh by by it being turned into some kind of gladiatorial horror show i'd love to do no no Simon no Cowell listen when i you know you know you, you have to you used to have to apologize when you went to england for for the terrible things that went on in the seventies and stuff. Yeah. But now, when you go to England, you have to apologise for the for the boy bands we produced in the nineties and two thousands. Honestly, like I have to walk around apologising to people. It's terrible what well, we've look, done. Well, look, we've improved. We pulled Jedward. Okay, so we're we're, we're improving. Ah, uh, look, they're all lovely people. That's all I'm going to say to you. <laughs> my my point is, I believe in music and I love music. And music is a religion to a lot of people. Well, and, actually, and it was when I was growing up. You're and a- I, very industrious guy you do a lot more than just music I mean you really are an industrious guy well I just yeah I do about 10 different things to earn a regular wage but uh, it's I do about 10 like I do voiceovers and I do I write a lot of satire do a lot of my own shows so I have my solutionism show which is 50 solutions to Ireland's problems in one hour I have the 10 dark secrets of the Irish revolution and I've just done a new one on Irish unity 26 plus 6 equals 1 about Irish unity and, and how we get there and how we make sure, you know, how economically it is going to benefit us and it's actually going to be a great thing. How's this all ching ching? You're doing, doing well. Uh, well, it's, it's, you it's, just keep going. You're Sorry. not moving into Dublin 4 yet. No, no, no. You just keep going basically and what you do is you keep, uh, I'll do a show like, let's say the best show, by the way, best show I did, Axis Ballymun, amazing, sold out show with my revolution show oh, and nice. that amazing theatre 
amazing place and uh, really loved it. You know? Just referencing my neighbours, thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, Bally Mung, Glass and Evan, love it, right? <laughs> yeah, it is, it's really nice. Uh, no, it's great. No, I also went to uh, North, the North Dublin National School Project. I was the poster, I was the experiment child that went to all the non denominational schools, so I haven't a word of Irish now. Now, now I, I do know we, you were coming in, we were, we, we've obviously discussed a couple of things that we're going to talk about on the show, but there's something I want to bring up, and I know that actually we both have a, sh a common interest in this a story that's kind of gone under the radar this year and it is really the Corrib gas fields and, and the actual resources that sit on our coast that seem to be, uh, for people who are anyway aware, mocking us and... Uh, well, it's, 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 I do a lot in solutionism, let's say, about how we talk, you know when, they, you know when people say you're talking the country down? Yeah. I laugh at that. Because they're always saying, oh, you lefty type people, you're, you're talking... The, the people who talk the country down are our own government. They're the ones who say, oh, sure, we've no natural resources. We're only a small little rock on the edge of Europe, out in the bobbing in the sea with no natural resources. And you're sitting there going, no. There's 68 possible exploration sites off our coast worth roughly two trillion quid. We're just not exploring them yet. And any that we have explored, we've sold off uh, for a pittance. You remember that all, all the money we get... Uh, all the money raised by these people, they only pay 7% in tax. Uh, and from that 7%, they can write out their, off their expenses. Mm. So, carb gas, we know the drama that happened there, right? But for me, it's the biggest story of the year. I know there's social things need to happen in Ireland. We need to change the world and all that. But when you get down to the brass tax, over the summer, Shell announced they were selling 45% of carb gas to the Canadian Pension yes, Board. Now, yes, that's the Canadian right state, right? Now, you know the big talk here as well from neoliberals is oh state ownership of assets how yeah, could you talk yeah. about such a thing but now you're bloody cuban yeah well if yeah well if the canadian pension board buy this which is a canadian state board you will now have 45 percent of carb gas owned by the canadian state the other 55 percent is owned by stat oil which is norwegian state so now carb gas is state owned but it's by two other countries it's just boggles the mind boggles yes now not only that but carb gas provides two-thirds of our natural gas needs annually not only and not only that, if we bought it for the billion quid that Shell were selling it for, we would pay it off in eight months, and then everything else is cream for our own pension funds, right? So it amazed me that this story came along. We're selling off uh, our resources of our own are being sold off, and at not one moment did Pascal turn around and go, "Let's use one billion of the AIB sale to maybe do this and mm. buy something for the Irish state," because it's not mentally in their makeup. I was just to gonna say, say that there's a psychology behind it. It's this. psychologically they're going, no no, state ownership of assets is wrong, let the big boys sell it among themselves. But we should be in a position, if we have money, to buy our assets. We shouldn't be buying our assets back, let's be honest, but yeah, there was some no. terrible deals done. But if we did that, we would start to actually make money for ourselves. Well, it goes back to a, a conversation I obviously had on Friday with Konstantin Gordiev where he actually said um, in terms of representative democracy, the people they represent, they, it was more of a clientist state, that they they represent their clients in multinationals, their clients in uh, your big uh, producers and your clients in, in Brussels and the EU as opposed to actually um, represent the people down who put them in place. So there's well, there was a, yeah. yeah, there was a thing in the New Yorker, uh, sorry, in the New York Times, and it said that uh, it uses Ireland as an example when explaining how companies avoid tax. I mean, that's our international image. Yes. That, well, our, our, that's, it's the funny thing about reputation. It's like, you know, at the time when this sale went on, that's when Justin was over comparing socks with Leo and it was all lovely and going yeah. for jogs in the park. Now, that's great. That's fine. But at no point did any journalist responsible for this story or anybody raise their head above the department and say, why aren't we buying this for the Irish state? Do you think it's because I tweeted it's... To, I tweeted to Pascal, I tweeted to various people, no response whatsoever, because it might be something that's too big for people to grasp, but honestly, it's a very simple transaction. Our gas coming out of our sea is producing billions, hundreds of millions uh, in natural gas that we can use. Why don't we own that? But that, I, to me, is a very simple but question. But I think there's a big element of this. This is Carob. If this was Sandy Cove, mm -hmm. um, We'd know all about it. Well, well. First of all, the, the view would never be allowed to be ruined. Yeah, so obviously no, no, no. no that's would honestly, be, yeah. it would never be allowed to happen. Yeah, it would never be allowed to happen. Anyway, even digging for it. But I, I just laugh at this idea that we have that we present ourselves as this little state that can't do anything but get in multinationals and don't charge them any tax. Because well, I'm telling you, the if jobs. you do that, they leave and all of this stuff. And and funny enough, like 
we are a normal geological uh, rock. entity, rock, uh, that has all of the normal geological things around us, in us, and, 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 every, and we're not exploiting that for ourselves. And this is my problem. It's, as you say, the clientelism, uh, Tony, which is, uh, you know, it was said to an Irish politician once, you're not Ireland's representative in the EU. You're the EU's representative in Ireland. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, so, and this is what I'm starting to see in, in our political class. And I wish it wasn't this way, because I know that a lot of them are good-hearted, mm -hmm. and I know that a lot of them really want to change things. But the problem is, the ideology is, no, 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 we can't mess with the big boys. The big boys are the people that we have to take care of. You have to be working for the people. Mm. And this is why I don't understand that we're, you know, Ireland could be a far more, I mean, look at it. It's a population of six and a half million on the entire island in a space the size of England. Mm. We should all be millionaires when you think about it. Well, well I've, I've said this again, and again, when it comes down to housing, you, you know, and we'll be touching on this one later. Mm. Um, we have an overabundance of housing. Mm -hmm. We just don't, we have a failure to match the problems together. It's, it, we don't really have a homeless, a homeless problem. We have a, an empty house problem, but we call it a homeless problem. Mm -hmm. And it is this small cap in hand running along beside the, the big boys, a, a few shekels there, please, boss. That's, it's so infuriating. It's like they're in this mindset of always being the servant, always. Well, what I, what I always say about the housing thing is, like, can you imagine if one hundredth of one percent of the energy that was put into digging holes for water meters and all of that organisational stuff had been put into building houses in the years 2013, 2014, 2015? If one hundredth of one percent of the energy and the activity was put into that, we wouldn't have a problem now. Or even if so, so the money was there and the activity was there. You can't turn around and say that the money wasn't there and all of this. They, they, they went and dug all those holes and did all that stuff. And by the way, they could build all those houses and put meters in them without anyone protesting. And I know, I, well, I know. Sorry to it's, say, yeah, yeah. but it's true. It's very true. And, 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 and it's... And in fact, the way to do metering was to just build, put all the metering in before anybody, before just charging in, anyone. In the new and then in 10 years time when there's a boom, just say, we're going to tax you for it. And everyone goes, oh, yay, that's okay. I'm going to the Galway races. Yeah, yeah, just take whatever you want. <laughs> Honestly, but, no, but you're not wrong, Paddy. But it comes back to a simple, simple. Uh, we called it ideology earlier. It comes back to an ideology that's been more and more prevalent. It's been prevalent this week, particularly in some of the um, talk that's coming out of like you know we do talk about the fact that you know the richest one percent have fifty percent of the global wealth. Mm. There, there's statistics that show that like you know there's mm. you can take the richest one hundred people and say they have more wealth than than um, almost what is it? Someone said to me, uh, sixty percent of the world's population. And then they tell you, there's, a, there's an old phrase in business that we use all the time, what gets measured gets done. Okay? Yes. And they love to say that, what gets measured gets done. What we have a problem here in this country currently is we're measuring stuff that suit a narrative. So we have a disconnect whereby if you measure the real statistics, mm -hmm. we have a, a homeless crisis. If you measure what Leo wants to talk about, that's normal in European standards. And what we're talking about here is the disconnect between that and, you know, and some of the stuff that's actually, you know, passed for this regular discourse. Yeah, but I mean, this is the new normal, right? So this is, this is my problem with the new normal. And in my show, Solutionism, sorry to keep plugging the shows, but, you know, all the material is there. I have this list and basically we're living in the time of, well, we're living past the time of the austerity. Right, so the austeritic and the heretic. So we'd be heretics here in this right. room. The austeritic is someone who says, caveat emptor, right? Buyer beware. Yeah. So everything's on the buyer. But my, my answer to that is no, caveat argentarius, banker beware. Uh, hang well, on. no, sorry, sorry, Tony. Why can't the banker take half of the You're asking the, the wrong risk? person here. You are just <laughs> asking. Sorry, if I have to sit in Lily's one more time and see someone quaffing champagne telling me, uh, ah, sure, people went mad, people went crazy, you know, they got the loans, didn't they? We no, all partied. The, the loans were given. The loans were given to people. Half the half the issue there should be taken on board by the the loanee, should I say. The, the, the problem or the loaner. Was, the problem actually was, and it's and it's a, mm. it's a systemic problem, and I, I, I have, I, I actually agree with you, Paddy. It, mm. was, it was this non-recourse loans don't exist here. Yeah. We had the, we had a, it, they call it jingle mail in the States where you sent back the keys, mm. you walked away and you restarted your life. In Ireland, they said, send back the keys, we'll come after you, we'll bankrupt you for six years, yeah, yeah. and we'll come after you for the day. I know, and, and, and the amazing thing about it is, 
the amazing thing is about it that that we all have to take take this on board and and it's part of the Irish mental construct now the the person who got the loan out is to blame for everything the person who gave the loan though they're fine so funny enough I'm just reading a bit of Noam Chomsky at the moment and what he says is that uh, your taxes and your pensions are now just an insurance scheme for the banks basically when they run into trouble uh, they could they can uh, avail of your taxes and things. So in my list, I go through them, caveat art today, and then populism, the word populist, as oh, somehow stop. that anything that might benefit people is to, so I believe in that as just being, you know, doing something meaningful and popular. But my favourite one, um, it, it is the Damien English one, and I get the whole audience to do this one with me. And uh, I mean, I love Damien English, I have to oh, say, no, he's no, comedy no. gold. But I, when I love him, because... English is a really funny name for him to have. Oh, because uh, he you know none I mean. of it. Yes. Well, no, 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 it's great. He's, like, he's a bit of a fat talk like that oh. for me. You know what I mean? So I get everyone... So the main thing that he used to do on Vincent Brown was every time someone brought up an idea or a new thing, so I got people to do this on my show, he would just go, where do you get the money for that? Where do you get the money for that? <laughs> and that's the mantra. Every time you come up with something, they go, where do you get the money for that? So I get the whole audience to do it. I want you guys to do it now for me, right now. Go on, the Perry is. No. Where do you get the money for that? Where do you get the money for that? Where do you get the money for that? Where you Far too clear, Martin. Far too clear. <laughs> No, 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 way. I can actually make out the words. It's not fair. But the, the, the thing about that is, the where will you get the money for that? And I, the answer I have, the heretic's answer is, well, where aren't you willing to look? And the thing is, you bring up uh, the fact that we only get, let's say, 5 billion in corporate taxes instead of 12 and a half. Yeah. We should be getting 12 and yeah. a half because there's 100 billion in corporate taxes. So the 12 and a half percent should, I mean, maths is not my forte, but, no, but it's assume, very straightforward. Like I'd assume it'd be 12 and a half billion. We're not getting that. We're turning down. Uh, that, you know, Damien English talked about our, our reputation around the world uh, being bad uh, over, over uh, uh, us talking down the country, talking about homelessness. What about our reputation to do with Apple tax? But leprechaun economics, the whole world laughed at Ireland. The whole world laughed at, laughed at Ireland. Yes. I mean, we I are, was in America when it broke. Hilarious. We are a, a joke mm. internationally. We are, as Leo keeps saying, that we're very transparent, but we are transparently... I, I, there were guys on Bloomsburg going, hey, just take the money and just say, I, I spent it. You know, like, <laughs> honestly, they were laughing at us going, why are you, why would you sue? Uh, You've just uh, been told you have 13 billion quid. And by the way, it is our 13 billion quid. I cannot, if I hear one more thing, well, it has to go into an escrow account and we'll see who gets it. It's ours. But That's it, just the way it anybody is. Anybody who's been in business on their own knows this. If, if mm. escrow, I don't care what way it is. How long does it take to set up an escrow account, by the way? <laughs> I, I, I literally have, I have, I have DM'd Margaret Vestager and say, listen, I, I have, I have, I have an eye band. <laughs> I have done that. You have no idea. <laughs> That's message I love what it takes. I, I, I said, I said, I have an IBAN and BIC ready to go. <laughs> would it take an hour? Not to set up an account, of course not. But they're saying what they're saying. They have their problem is finding a fund manager. And let's, and here, here's where it gets even more fun. Mm. We're looking at international fund managers because, you know, it's not even like we want to have it done by an Irish company. Oh, let's on. let's have it done somewhere else because, lo and behold, we, we wouldn't want Irish people to be involved with this. But this, again, is my thing about, it, you know, that... They're they're not working on behalf of the people, because let's say if fin if Fine Gael or any party was all about being elected, mm. what would the greatest thing you could possibly do be to get the apple tax and say we've got the apple tax? Oh, stop. They Christmas. would be elected forever, Christmas. and ever and ever, and even the fond memories ninety years from now of yeah. that time we took the apple tax, mm. they'd still be elected on the basis of the fond memory, much like Italia ninety uh, when Paki uh, saved the goal. Exactly. But they won't do it because it's more important for them not to offend their business friends then well, it is to actually do something that might benefit I us. Or am I wrong? Am I wrong? I, I had a Twitter during the week. I was like, oh, it's 5,000 jobs in Apple. And I said, but they're all paying their taxes. Oh, well, I, I'm saying, yeah, that's 2.2 million per job. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's what you. That's what it, each one of those jobs is ah, costing you. You did the maths. I like yeah, this, Martin. I like this. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's there's an actual statistic which. Um, you know Finfacts, uh, Finfacts.ie mm -hmm. that does it. He does some wonderful stuff. He took the uh, 122 companies I think it are that in terms of FDI companies, picked them up, mm -hmm. dropped the same companies that operate in Germany, so mm -hmm. mapped them across, and said in in Germany those companies employ 644,000 people. Mm -hmm. They produce 220 billion in sales. Mm -hmm. Pick them up, bring them back to back to Ireland. They employ one hundred and thirty-four thousand people. 
mm-hmm. for 680 billion worth of jobs. Yeah, yeah. So we get none of the job. Well, uh, crumbs on crumbs yeah, in terms of jobs. Yeah, yeah. And and four times the sales. So don't tell me it's not a brass plate well, operation. Actually, on my way in here, and I was just listening mm. to RT mm. on the way, and this is very relevant to you, Paddy. They were talking about the music industry mm. and how much the music industry can contributes to the economy mm. and jobs wise the music industry there is more jobs in the indigenous indigenous irish music mm-hmm. industry than in google apple and twitter put together there's put about together. there's about 29000 people in the service industry in dublin alone okay so you know that's fair enough and i listen apple are great i i mm-hmm. I, I spent enough on their bloody products um but you know what i mean it's it's like just, just be fair. And here's another way of doing it. And this is one of my solutions in my show. You know, I was just laughing about the whole Lithuanian chop and mal thing. And I was just, I did, I did a tweet where I said, you know, you know, remember the days of Andrew Carnegie building libraries in Waterford and Kilkenny, places he'd never even been. And he, you've got Carnegie libraries. That's right. You've got the Ivy Trust who built homes for people and, and all over Dublin. One quarter of Dublin pretty much was built by Guinness. Mm-hmm. How are we living in a world where that hasn't inspired today's billionaires? to be philanthropists and in that way. So one, one thing I was going to say was, look, we know you paid very little tax, lads, but here's, here's the way we're going to do it. You don't have to pay us it in cash, but we need you to build 80,000 houses. We want How skin, about that? skin and we'll in call the game. It, and we'll call it Apple Estates. Yeah, you know? like a Viva Stadium. Yeah, yeah, Apple Estates, all of this. And, and listen, and you, all your workers can live there and you have to build 50% social housing and that'll, that'll sort everything out. I mean, out. you can even force them to drive yeah, the cars. Yeah, we'll give you the action. land, we'll give you the land, you build, and we want it done in six months or we want the 12.5%. Honestly, I mean, I know it sounds simplistic, but these are things that they can do and it makes them look good, you know? Well, I was down, I was down in Ken Mare over the... I, was, I wanted to go... It was a stuff. total mare. Well, I went down. I haven't been, I haven't been down so long. <laughs> And when I got you will get bad jokes with me, by the way, guys, and you're not allowed to edit them out. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Tony's going to edit all this shit. Okay. Anyway, I was yeah. down in Kinmare, and, yeah. and I was looking around, and the Heady Rays are just, I mean, everywhere. Everywhere. And I, I was amazed. He built the road. He, yeah, he built the road. He'll vote for him. He built the fucking road. He fixed the that's, fucking road. That's, that's a David Savage joke. Yeah. Just, just, <laughs> yeah, just yeah, lay it on his door. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. But all Irish politicians, to a degree, are Heady Rays. Heard Noonan on the radio today, and Noonan mm. was our, our big international finance minister that they loved all over the world. Everybody respected. He was wily. Uh, he's, wily. Down in, he's down in Limerick, and he's talking about making Limerick a hub town between Galway and somewhere fucking else yes, on yes. the west Lim- coast. Funny enough, you'll find that Limerick is between Galway and Cork. <laughs> yes. yes, that yes. was it. Cork. I yeah. knew there was, yeah. that C O R K. We have a lot of viewers, so how people who listen to this will have to Google Cork. Exactly, and know? there's two motorways going into yeah. Limerick. Actually, Limerick. Is the best served uh, uh, city in Ireland. It's got a train line to Galway. It's got two motorways going into it from Galway and from Dublin. Yeah. And and they're constantly doing so. I mean, Limerick is a great. I love Limerick. And yet, but we, I'm just saying, and yet we haven't linked Limerick and Cork. No, no. I, I can I, get from here where we're sitting now to yes. Limerick quicker than my in-laws can from. But Cork. I've sat. To I've sat in Butterfield. I've sat there yeah, and yeah, waited. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's how Noonan goes from being this international superstar voted the best finance minister ever to walk yeah. on water yeah yeah and then a couple of weeks after he's out of office there he is and he's fighting the old parish pump down there and but, then the, the, you the, know. but listen that's all all politics is local and that is it i mean the the, the uh, willie od machine is unbelievable it's an amazing thing i kind of like study, willie and politics wouldn't be the same the, but, but they found out that he was the most successful politician in europe in terms of his 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 vote uh, uh, energizing his vote getting in, in terms of doing that kind of thing and it's amazing you know what i mean so oh, look, i don't know seen... look i i always find you can't blame any individual uh, politician i think the systemic failure is there yeah. Well, I have to say about Damien English saying we're, we're going to get onto this, so we might as well get into this, boys. Housing. What Damien English said this week was just beyond, beyond. Will you get me for that? All credit for this, it was Mick Call who caught this. Yeah, Mick Call on Twitter put up a video of 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 the thi- of the actual. Uh, I, I, I want to call it the tirade, but it was more a scripted kick that actually ended up being literally watching the guy implode himself well, uh, self look, emoliation look i know what he, look i know what they're i know what they're facing i know what they're doing again it's the ideological thing it's like standing up and saying you're talking the country down how does he not see the irony 
in that he sounds like Bertie back in the day. Yeah, moaning he and sounds cribbing. like the cribbing and moaning. Like honestly, guys, you have to stop saying that people who are critiquing your work are are talking the country down. Mm. Um, I I I I just think you know just deal with the problem at hand, and and don't don't spend your time or energy. Again, it's about where do you focus your energy? Yeah. Why is he focusing his energy on that? I well, no you 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 wrote a bit about this, Tony. You wrote about the the Occidental tea shock. Now, before we get to that, Katie Hannan on Twitter, she she. Mm pull this all together into one tweet. Well done, mm. Katie. I, I mm. thought it was brilliant. And she said, so a quick recap. Homeless is not as, homelessness is not as bad as in other countries. Mm. Homelessness is normal. Media reports on homelessness are damaging Ireland's reputation. Mm-hmm. Homelessness doesn't happen overnight and takes years of bad behaviour. Did I miss anything? My God, yeah, I know. It's... But again, this is my keeping up with the Joneses problem. That's why we live in a country that has, uh, you know, 17-1 and 17-2 on your number yeah, plates. Yeah. It's this issue with why is reputation more important than solving problems? This is one thing I've always... And who cares what people think here? Well, I've, I've said this and I've said the same people who label homeless normal now, mm. they're the sons and daughters of those who turned a blind eye to the mother and baby homes in the past. This psyche of keep it all behind closed doors, all yes, under the car. The keep her going patsy mentality. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And, and I don't know. I mean, again, I say that these people are PR teams and stuff mm. like that. And the PR team would logically be saying, well, hell, if you go out there and solve this problem, you're going to look great. Yeah. If you go out there and say this is normal, you are not going to look great. What's happening here? And what base are they appealing to? Well, you know no, I mean? no. And, uh, this came up because there was, there was more than just one person involved in this. Mm. It started out, actually it started out before Leo's presidential dinner, but the, the presidential dinner or the Fine Gael dinner that Leo did, he first brought up that homelessness was normal. He said there was a normal level of homelessness. Yeah, so. yeah, he did. And mm-hmm. then that was echoed by Damien English, Pascal Donoghue. Mm. Then we come to Conor Skeen. This is the man who was charged with solving the homeless problem and his go-to position is it's unsolvable now he my view on this is Mm. that he gets that job because that's his opinion he doesn't get the job because he's the guy who says look i can solve this i can come Mm -hmm. in here i can Mm -hmm. fix this Mm. he's the guy who suits the fine gale policy of well we're not going to touch this this is the private market well it's it's i know but there's there are empty buildings there's tons of uh, city council land there's an ability to build cheaply. There are all these things. It's it's, they just have to bring it all together. I mean, I I just the problem is in 2011 I felt this kind of optimism and I felt this level of support saying, okay, look, historically I can't really I I don't sustain the idea of blue shirts mm. or or most political parties, but uh, let's let's give them our best. And they singularly well, have done in that. In the states, where they had sort of the same thing, they brought in Obama. And yeah. there was loads of Obama hope was and change. Good, hope and change and And look in your pocket, that's where the change and, and is. And in the end of Obama <laughs> that's all you have left. he was no different to anybody else, and then you get Trump. Whereas with Fina Gale, mm. they went from Obama to Trump. They're the same party, they just moved from Obama no, to Trump. No, but that's an interesting idea. It's, it's a good it's, theory. But, but but the theory the theory is like it comes back down to what Damien English said, and it was a comment mm. that wasn't really picked up upon. What in his don't talk down the country and wrap yourself in the, in the green jersey comment. Mm. What he actually said then was, it's been put to, and I know it's been put by me as well in my writing, that that um, there's nothing in EU law that forbids a country from do, from acting in the interests of defend, of, of protecting its citizens. That's, it's actually that line, I've, I've mangled it there, but it mm. actually it's in EU law. that So we can't turn around and say budget constraints, GDP constraints, we can't actually use that. If we decide that that we need to, to finance and get the resources to do this, all we have to do is say we're acting to protect our citizens. Yeah. What he actually said in the doll was that suggestion is hurting our international reputation. Yeah. And what that meant in implicitly is that our international reputation is more important than 3,124 homeless children. I know, I know I'm going to go back to it and say the number doesn't really matter whether it's 20 children That's right. or 20,000 yeah, yeah. children. Yeah. It's the fact that we have decided that 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 there's an actual um, quantifiable amount of there's, mm. there's no red line here. 
We're but just going to keep stepping over every red line. They've actually got... Fine Gael have actually gone into a meltdown mode right now. They're in a meltdown mode right now. You have Regina coming out, and rightly so, mm. about uh, Barry Walsh. Rightly so about mm. Barry Walsh. And Regina is right to call it out. But Fine Gael are attracting these people. Fine Gael, and we've said it before... Mm. There's no need to worry about alt-right in Ireland because both Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael actually absorb them quite well. well. Look, look, Ireland's an odd place. Like like most normal people, you have bits of right in you, you have bits of left in you. You know, there's a lot of socially conscious Fianna Gaelers, but they also are fiscally extremely conservative. You know what I mean? But look, th- this all goes back, I, I always go back to this debate in Dáil Éireann in 30th of October 1924. And... Um, the d- debate was against the background of fiscal adjustment when the free state was concerned to be seen to pay its debts, the annuities, you know, the annual repayments of the British government for its buyout via the land commission of the remaining landlords and the redistribution of their lands to the Irish peasant proprietors. And the other backdrop was against chronic unemployment because the debate appears to have arisen from the death of a child from starvation in Dublin's north inner city as a direct consequence so, so, of unemployment. So right? a child died in North Industry. This is 1924. Yeah, yeah, 24. So the Free State Minister for Industry and Commerce, Patrick McGilligan, responded on behalf of the government instead of Ernest Blythe. And he's, he upbraided the members who had raised the case for unnecessarily, as he saw it, parading a situation of which they were all aware to the National Parliament, Parliament and in doing so talking down the country. So this is from 1924. 24, as we have it in our own, the parlance of our time. He then went on to say, it is no function of government to provide work for anybody. We could try to develop tendencies and we can set a pace a bit, but it's not the function of the government to provide work. And this mentality, and then he says, in relation to unemployment, he went on to say, there's certain limited funds at our disposal. People may have to die in this country and may have to die through starvation. And that is exactly what, uh, where we are today. It, it, it's a mentality. It's, it's an idea that, you know, the market decides we can't be seen to be intervening in society. And it's, you know... To be honest, a, you know, a little bit of socialism there would have gone a long way. Mm. Well, this brings me back to what, what Eileen Gleeson, and this has been a lot of furor about what mm. Eileen Gleeson is. And now, I want to read the exact quote so that we're, mm. we're 100% on scene here. Mm. Let's be under no illusion here. Mm. When somebody becomes homeless, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes years of bad behaviour. That isn't the behaviour of you and me. And that, to me, is Fine Gael. Mm. There is this Martin, separation. Martin, I, I gotta, I gotta, gotta keep. I'm not. A, God, I'm not gonna defend Fine Gael too, too, mm. too, 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 too robustly. But I, again, we're we're attacking a party here. But they are elected by people in the country, so they mm. represent a cohort of the people in the country. So what we actually have is not just a, a party. We have an ideology. We have a problem in so far as that these things kind of suit a narrative. It's it suits. We're sitting. We're sitting in, in in a house here where where my house might go up by twenty percent according to the OECD Woo-hoo. in the next couple. Exactly, <laughs> Paddy. But that's we're all supposed to feel twenty percent better but off. But loads yeah. of people do feel better off, and that's my point. And that's why you, that's why as going back to Paddy's point, and it comes back to to Leo's mentality. And I do believe that this is the problem in Fine Gael currently. He's made a calculated decision that he doesn't want to represent. The full all the people all yeah. the people he understands that the people who are in that in this category who feel 20 percent better off can actually get him elected in the new in the new politics of where you maybe get 25 to 28 percent of the vote you cobble together enough and you can hold on to power on that basis it, it comes down to what he, he on he did his big speech on friday he said every child in in in, in this country deserves a future and the very next day he said that the, that we had a, a, a in context context matters is what he said yeah. that um that we have a, a, a normal level of homelessness so it took him less than 24 hours to forget about um to, about about the actual crisis and yeah. he, it, he changed his tone you know I, i'm looking at you know the the journal did a fact check mm. and they said well actually he's using figures that are 2 years out of date mm. and rather than actually jump down leo's throat because obviously it's difficult to, to go at the Taoiseach and, mm. and the leader. They said he shouldn't just use, maybe he shouldn't use those statistics again. And you see, there's a, a part of me that thinks this whole, whole Barry Walsh thing is a smokescreen because they've been getting it so hot. How, I like your conspiracy theory. How do they, yeah. 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 <laughs> I, 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 well, I this, don't. This one is a doozy. Now listen okay, to this okay, one. Right? Okay. okay. They're after coming out now and slamming Barry Walsh, and, and deservedly so, but it's mm. from internal Fine Gael, which is 
unusual. We know mm. that's unusual. Mm. But Barry Walsh stood up at their recent conference or their mm. recent thinking where they passed the brain around, whatever it is, and he lambasted women. Lamb based of them and got a round of applause from everybody in the room. I saw it. Shona, that was fine. Shona Marie report, uh, tweeted that he got a standing ovation. Standing ovation. So once it's brought out in public that that you know he's insulting women, oh we, we, we'll do something about it if some one of our own is saying it. But stand up in a room full of people, and they will cheer you on in Fine Gael. Cheer you on. I know, I know, but 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 we're constantly asked. To remember Sinn Fein's past, let's say, right? Yes. But Fine Gael's past, like when Fine Gael came to power, the tax rate here was fifteen to twenty-five percent. It was renew a tax rate, okay? The TDs were earning the equivalent of thirty-six thousand euros a year tax-free, whereas let's say my grandfather, who was a self-employed plumber, was earning fifteen thousand. And that was good money back then. Yeah. They were banging on about how the civil war had cost so much money because the Republicans had blown up uh, stuff and done everything. But actually, they spent so much money on the army, the Free State Army, sixty thousand. They were paying commandants a hundred thousand quid a year. So the state started on clientelism. It started on that uh, basis. And it's continued since then. But then the first act that the finance minister did was to cut the shilling, uh, cut the old age pension by a shilling. As you do. And Fine Gael have always had these funny ideas like, cut the old age pension by a shilling. That'll be popular. Yeah. No, it wasn't. Now, you know, fat on children's shoes. Oh God, please no. Irish water. Oh no, stop, stop. It's you're killing me. And, and it's like, don't come up, like, try and learn a little bit from Fianna Fáil if you can. And I'm not, I mean, I'm not defending no, Fianna Fáil no, here by any means, but learn a little bit of populism. But that comes back to the, to the, to the mantra that they like to say, Paddy. They like yeah. to say, you know, yeah. Fianna Fáil mess it up and we come in and clean and clean. And clean it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they, Fianna Fáil uh, clean it out, we clean it up. Yeah. I get it. I get it. But that's been the, that's been the dynamic here for 90 years. And but, we need to, we really have to think about our vote. I mean, when you see that the... the the poll for 65% of people voting for either one of those parties. It's, you're kind of sitting there going, okay, guys, I know you're all socially conscious. I know you're great. I know a lot of people in those parties are also socially conscious, but they need a break. We have to give them a break mm. away from the system, and we have to bring in people who are going to change the system. Yeah. And I'm sorry, it's not going to be the small parties. You know, It's not, no. So uh, we are going to have to you know, make a big decision uh, next time around because we are going to have to put in a bunch of people who we know are going to change things radically and it's by the way you know you know how politics works in this country things won't change as radically as you think everything takes ages basically mm. but we are going to have to uh, 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 make it an, a huge change or else we're just going to get more of the same the Stockholm Syndrome here is just it's like nothing I've ever seen I lived through 2008 but it's like people today who say, Donald Trump, you know, you'd miss, you'd miss George W. Bush. Yeah. Oh, you mean the guy who started two wars, 9-11 yeah. happened, uh, Katrina, and the two 2008 crash, and he invented ISIS and invaded Iraq and Afghanistan. Are you telling me that Trump is as bad as him? Well, you see, that's where I say that. I mean, I mean and, and this is what we're doing, this, this amnesia. Well, social, this, me social media, and, and I, I discussed this previously with somebody on social media. Social media is actually social memory. Yeah. It's that no matter what happened in the past, somebody will find it. Yes. Yeah. Despite politicians always being on sort of on the campaign trail and, and parish bump, there's always been people in Ireland that speak the truth or clearer truth mm. than others. And they're usually unaffiliated to anybody. Now, we have to say Peter McVeary in Ireland, he, he was actually angry today. Mm. And to make that man angry is very difficult. I mean, I've seen him sit beside min housing minister after housing minister and mm. he nods along, yeah, we're delighted to get another... Ten mm. The man knows how to play the game, but today he lost it. Mm. And he, he put up a tweet and he said, last year government built 638 units of social housing. In one year in the 1980s, we built over 6,000 units. Now, yeah. what that proves... the we're, well, two of us here, Tony probably not, we're old enough to remember the 1980s. <laughs> and it was, it was constant austerity. And if they could build 6,000 houses in the midst of that, mm. all that's stopping them building houses now is ideology. Yeah, I mean, and also, how did Fianna Fáil in the 1930s, the poorest time in history, how did they build Merino and Crumlin and all these things? These are doable things, you know, and it's, it, it's, you just have to, and again, I say, work with big business, work with everybody, do what you can to get it built. And like, look, watch the votes come in, watch the vote. And But funny enough, what I spoke about earlier, people vote 
people vote for you anyway? Why would you do any work for people well, when yeah, they're voting yeah, for you anyway? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, there. There is a cohort of people out there who will always vote the same way. We can't continue to think like that. We cannot continue to think that just because the family voted Fianna Fáil and or Fianna They Gale, fixed the pot oil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not that. No, but that's... Yeah. But like, and it, now I live in a pot hole. Do you remember? Yeah, no, it's, no, honestly, that's what it is. But it's... I know what you're saying, we can't continue. But it's it just continues. And the point is... If you give them a bloody nose in the next election, I'm a really one. Now the last one's a pretty bloody nose. Yeah, yeah. Just, like they lost thirty seven seats or twenty seven seats. Fine Gael act like they run like there's only fifty of them, mm. honestly, and and uh, forty three Fine Fallers, and honestly that like that's a bare majority. Mm. So, you know, you have to look at or sorry, it's ninety three, so it's not a bare majority. But the but the point is that you you have to look at this and go just one bloody nose, and maybe they'll think about it. But who knows? Who knows? But they who haven't, Paddy. They've they've decided now that this charade of. Um, yeah, Lanigan's ball. Yeah. I coined the phrase. It's I step in, I step out again, and that's what's going on. Yeah, it's kind of a false opposition. Yes, you know what yeah, I mean. Of and, like, and and you know, it didn't used to be that way. I mean, uh, Fianna Fáil were actually quite a socialist party in the thirties and all that type of thing. You know, I mean, and they did build a lot of social housing. Yeah. You know, even the Cosgrave government, which I, I can't really stand it, but supposedly they built a hundred thousand houses throughout their tenure. You know, which is which is you know. But they don't set these as markers anymore, and I've had this conversation before. There isn't a red line. We're not going to say, once we've reached 10,000 homeless people, that's the red line. Everything falls in. We're going to, everything at, at, at that stage. But you know what I'm really annoyed about? Like, we're Irish. Like, why aren't we building houses? We love building houses. Oh, it's our favourite thing. Like, most of us want to have two or three houses. <laughs> so just, and some of us do have two. Like, there's 180,000 empty houses. So, I mean, now the, Irish, the Irish built London. They yeah. built New York. And they can't build... 10,000, 20,000 social houses. It's, it's, it's against, it's, see, what I can't bear is it's against our nature. It'd be like giving up tea. Do you know what I mean? I can't bear it. But I, I, all I want is, all I want to do, it's all I've wanted to do since time eternal. I want to build a housing estate in Shercock called Shercock Homes. And, and the little byline underneath oh, is stop. Elemental, my dear Gawson. <laughs> <laughs> And watch as nobody moves in. <laughs> but there, there were bigger stories this week. I mean, we, we focused on housing because mm. to us that's a bigger story. But RT News last night led with rugby. Oh, well, uh, well we have oh. to talk about the, 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 the Rugby World Cup and the fact that we have had nothing but, uh, you know, our, uh, uh, the Welsh let us down, the Scottish let us down. Oh, yeah. Blame someone else. It's all. Uh, you, Here, you, here's what I blame, okay? And this is going to keep happening, right? The Web Summit left Ireland because, and I worked on a Web Summit with Paddy, and it just got too big. And the, the city, uh, Dublin's not a modern city yet. We don't have a metro from the airport into town. Now, I tweeted this yesterday and got a whole pile of lacquery. Oh, why can't you take a bus like anywhere else? And all this kind of L stuff. But for a modern, civilised, first world city, to not have a metro where you walk down a set of stairs, in an you get into a train and you get up and you're on Stevens Green. Mm. Okay? The first thing that comes when Dublin Airport, you walk out, belt of cigarette smoke. Next thing, belching bus, massive map showing 12 different buses going 12 different places. Where the hell am I? And then you get to the freezing taxi queue. Sorry, if you have a delegation coming over to look at stuff. Now, I know it meant it, they didn't judge it on this. Yeah, but... The point is, any delegation coming over to do anything here will notice our infrastructure is appalling. Not to have a metro is wrong. Okay. Uh, Anti-train, anti anti-everything. And as well as that, you have to go down Dorset Street. I mean, for Christ's sake, there's a takeaway on Dorset, a Turkish takeaway on Dorset Street called Midnight Express. <laughs> I mean, come yeah, on. That, I know the first thing that someone who's seen that movie looks like goes, OK, I'm out of here. We're not doing it there's here. No, there's, <laughs> when, we I, get, I, when we get cameras, you'll be able to see this. But Tony Groves has a breast pressed up against the window in here. This is unbelievable you, stuff. You need, to leave, you need to leave Dorset Street alone. I'm going to the big tree later. <laughs> Listen, I, I love points. Dorset Street. I grew up in North Great Georgia Street. The north side is my, north inner city is where I grew up. But I'm just saying, you know what I mean? It's a beautiful Georgia Street. They need to take down all the tat and make it beautiful. Oh, no, I agree with you, Paddy. Yeah. But what I'll say, uh, the infrastructure was a huge problem. It might have been a problem when they arrived in and told them we're going to have it in Parky Cueve and they walked, drove in and they saw Parky Cueve with JCBs on the pitch as opposed yeah. to grass. Yeah. It may have been a problem when they said we're going to have this lovely stadium in Galway and they said, yeah. boy, the way, we haven't got planning permission for it. Yeah. Right? These were the actual logistic problems that we didn't really, but we said, sure, aren't we? Great crack. Listen, they were, they were <laughs> <comfortable> <laughs> <Yeah>. crack. <laughs> 
I know, but they were trying to sell me Bulgarian apartments back in 2007 or whatever. Yeah, they were yeah. trying to sell a bunch of people in there. They were up in the, the Tatra Mountains or whatever the hell, the, whatever mountains they go skiing on anyway. Yeah, yeah. And they're saying, now, you'll have to land in Sofia if you buy the apartment, but... You know, it's a five-hour drive to the to the apartments, but don't worry, we're building the airport. Yeah, the airport yeah, yeah, will yeah. be built. And of course, this is one year before the crash. I bet you the airport hasn't been built. Uh, no, I, but I, please tweet in if, if true, you have seen it built. True, true story. It's a true story. Yeah. Guy, I know. You have to like, have the infrastructure built. It, it had all started to collapse, and yeah. the Bulgarian apartment started to drop in price. Yeah. He bought twelve because he thought I get in early. <laughs> <laughs> And you know something? It's still early. And and, and, and and I'm sitting here going, I think I financed that. <laughs> you may have. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, no, but I, I understand. But the, the thing is, like, Ireland amazed me that we can't, like, the reason Lisbon is the perfect place, it, because even a corrupt hellhole like Lisbon and Portugal, I mean, yeah. Portugal pigs, but, you know, um, no, no, Portugal, see. Ireland, uh, Greece, Spain, but even those places yeah. have metros. There's a metro yeah. from the Greek airport into Athens. Let's yeah, be yeah. honest now. No, no. We're, we're, it's like, a very simple... It, it's it's a symbol of civilization, but of course my dad was saying, you know, where's the Dublin Opera House? Where's the you know yeah. the the symphony orchestra? All of these things. It's important to have these things. They are they are they are. We have the National Museum. We do, we do. It's in a barracks. It's and they rob and they robbed the rhino horn out of it. Ah, uh, who did? Ah, <laughs> uh, no. Let me guess. For. for for somebody who robbed yeah, yeah, you know, you can actually just order that stuff online, lads. You don't have to rob rhino horns, really. That's like Lamb's dissertation <laughs> for pig. Mind to put that box under the table. Like <laughs> that's, listen, that's like Lamb's dissertation to, of pig. You know, you don't have to burn the house down to cook the pig. You know oh, what I mean? God. <laughs> <laughs> just, on the, just on the Rugby World Cup, it leads me on to some of the th some things we like to call the boilers that we like to talk about. Yeah. Because what it actually, uh, something about the lack of infrastructure and the lack of planning actually brings me to uh, something I wrote about already um, with the white paper on the future of Europe. And I know there were actually supposed to be meetings that happened on this in March and in, in April and May. And I think we got around to it this week in, in, uh, in Trinity where Leo had another photo opportunity and um, Gavin Riley tweeted that a, a microphone was taken from uh, a colleague who tried to uh, question him. And he, um, Gavin said that he tried to question on, on homelessness and, and some of the other issues. And he was told, no, this is, this is a single issue issue kind of meeting and we're mm. just going to talk mm. the future of Europe. This white paper has been up for quite some time. There's allegedly 20,000 uh, meetings happening around Europe to have this discussion. We're only getting around to it now, as I okay. said. It was supposed to have happened early. There is a lot to be concerned about in the paper in terms of, I actually do believe in, in, in um, you know, more inter integration, people actually in a wider society and, and, more, and, more, and more things that, that will actually be for the greater good but what I'm seeing in the paper is going it's it, it leans heavily on free market protections mm -hmm. European trade deals mm. and security which is going to lead us into a difficult position in terms of neutrality mm. well I was saying this about and there was the, the Ireland Denmark match there during the week where our hearts were thrown out but we totally expected it so mm. I was saying this about the integration of the EU that we needn't worry about not getting to Russia. Come April next year, when we're all being conscripted into the EU army, we'll be all on the Russian border anyway. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. <laughs> and and uh, honestly, th this is why I say we need to be able to, like, American states are all quite different. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And they do have different tax plans and all of this. So we need to stop pretending this homogenization of Europe is a normal thing and we'd be like the United States of America. We won't be. Rhode Island's tax-free, Delaware's a tax haven, blah, blah, blah. But this idea that we would somehow be in an army uh, fighting the Russians, I mean, the, 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 for a country like us, that would devastate us. Mm. And we already had the conscription crisis. I, one of the 10 dark secrets I have is that 2 million people signed an anti-conscription pledge here. Can you imagine 2 million Irish people agreeing on anything now? No. Well, bar, bar if Garth Brooks played like 30 gigs in so There's two things. Will, there, <laughs> over and over and over. <laughs> there are only two things that will motivate Irish en masse yeah. right across the spectrum. Yeah. Garth Brooks yeah. and Prohibition. Oh yeah, that's true. That's you the mean only we'd all give up the drink together? The only, the only two things... <laughs> it's, I think Martin's lost it. The yeah. only two things that will motivate Irish people completely yes. is Prohibition and Garden. Other than need, that... And by, by the way, we need a year of Prohibition here. <laughs> that's one, that's, I agree with Leo on that one. Well, another boiler that I was going to come on to, Tony, and this is the, the public services card. And one of our, our people that we follow quite closely, Tup Ed, had a little bit to say about it today. He said, I've received a copy of the data processor agreement 
between the Minister for Public Expenditure and the Minister for Social Welfare. And this revealed that it's only for minimum use, solely to protect or solely to produce data quality reports. Now, that's a big fly in the ointment. Mm -hmm. It's that the the reasons we've been given for the PSC and the extension of the PSC and the misery people are going through over the PSC. It's looking very like they didn't have a legislative basis for this. So this is a boiler you want to watch. Okay. Tup Ed, there's also Rossa McMahon, Elaine Edwards. These are people that you need to watch for this story. We hope to do something on it here on the show in the near future. Yeah, um, well... I I also want to touch on just briefly what happened at the eighth committee this this week, and and, I, and I'm not going to talk in in, in uh, too too in depth because that's not my uh, remit, and I have to say. But what I will say is is um it, it it's 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 been it's been striking in the week of Barry Walsh, and uh, we have had Ronan Mullins now, and we've had um, Maddie McGrath. What they've actually successfully done is shown the um when when when. Faced with facts and faced with actual medical professionals, they just decide to shout at the women. And I think that may actually, fingers crossed, from my uh, nailing my colours to the mast, may actually bring the people who are in the middle, who are uncomfortable with certain points of this, to see that actually some of this isn't actually fact-based from from uh, from the, the pro-life side. I think now I'm, I'm hopeful that the Eighth Committee, if it gets a, a proper report that the public can digest and the public can actually... Um, make up their own minds on that some of the noise that's coming from the from the the pro life side will actually make pe make people think well you know what guys I'm 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 comfortable to read this and make up my own mind based on the facts the science and the actual stories. Well, I hope it can stay that way, Tony, and it is definitely one that's gonna. I mean, we're gonna have a whole year of repeal the eighth, and people better get used to it. Um, it's going to happen. So we, everybody better get it used to the fact that it's going to be there. This is my only issue with all of this stuff, and I don't really deal with social issues myself. Uh, I'm more interested in those financial things going on like carb. But this is what I see. The social issue arguments are very... They're helpful to the government, in a sense, in that it, it takes up all of the airtime. It takes up every single thing. Gay marriage was a wonderful thing to happen. Uh, I voted for it myself. Uh, and... It, it was amazing, but it took up so much airtime. It just literally... And things like I said about the carb gas sale by Shell and uh, what's happening with the Port of Cork and the 300 million they're importing from Texas. We're importing gas from Texas That's now. That's right, yeah. All of this stuff, it gets missed and it doesn't get discussed, you know. And I, I really think that we need to just keep keep our brains open and do all of that. And I think another um, boiler is that through social media pressure... Bob Geldof may hand back his knighthood. <laughs> uh, when people when people remind him of you know the, the, the excesses of, of the British Empire, what they did and and, and, and things like this. And oh, but, uh, but Bob is Bob is. But you, you know, know you know I, I laughed. David Davenport called him a true blue dub the other night, <laughs> on a, but yeah, and I just said to myself. Count which which what Dublin County Dublin? Well, you see, he was half English anyway because he lived in Kingstown. From you Kingstown, know, he was, yeah, yeah. Yeah. His, his curb stones, I believe, are blue, red, and white. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. He's a true red, white, and blue. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, and there's many of those, and fair enough. I mean, that's your opinion, but I just I just think that that was amazing that uh, uh, he handed back the freedom of the city of Dublin, and I just think. It's an insult to Dublin more than anything else. Well, you know? My sister now, she's a long time in the UK and she, mm. she will say it to me quite often. She said, I don't know what happened to you. At about 14, you started talking like Bob Geldof and you still talk the same bullshit today. Yeah, yeah. Well, I always say like the revisionist chip inside <laughs> my head has got to overload. But also, what, what's funny about his accent, like you think it's a Dublin accent, it's not. It's a very posh accent. It is. Actually. Oh, yeah. But it's just very aggressive. It sounds really aggressive to, to people in England, that's the problem, you know. <laughs> I just, I, I just like, just like Phil in it as well. He's, you know, it's got a stuffed but nose. That's say, right. He's got a cold, a permanent cold. I have say, I, I sometimes I feel sorry for Bob because no matter where he opens his mouth, the UK or here, yeah. it's just a whole army of people. He's just, he was anti-Scottish. He was anti-Scottish independence. He was anti-Brexit. He's, he's, he's. It's very his attitude is extremely establishment. You know what I mean? And I love, I love a lot of things. Love the music. I love the. I love the wherewithal and the get up and go. I even love the tricks that the Boomtown Rats used to play, like in his autobiography, are hilarious. So there's lots of stuff I like about Bob, but it's just, you know, 
decrying the, the rebel leaders and all of those types of things, I wonder what Bob would have done himself back then. I, I often think that he probably would have got involved. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And Well, he'd have thrown stones, yeah. Well, maybe something like that. Who knows? But uh, he would have done a gig. But let's, all I'm going to tell you, lads, is for all that we've talked about, all of this stuff is completely irrelevant. Because in 15 years, the droids are coming. Oh, yeah. Okay? I keep saying and this. this is the most important thing, right? And all that we could unite countries, we can put borders up, we can do whatever, we can go, oh, we oh, we got to find new ways of making money. No, the droids are coming. Yeah. That's all that uh, matters. There was a program, RT did a thing about, uh, will a robot take my job? Yeah, did you see the Irish droid there? That was sitting there? Oh. The, really, the really annoying <laughs> droid. It's time for bed. <laughs> <laughs> that old droid telling you it's they're time for make, bed. They're going to make a droid that goes, yeah. he fixed the fucking pothole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the, droid, the droid comes into the voting booth with you. The droid comes in and says, Make sure now you put her next chair beside. That's where your father voted. Oh. <laughs> he got lighting along the road. Lighting. But my, my view on, you know, will a droid take your job? The future of jobs... Why does a droid talk like that in Ireland in the future? I have no idea. <laughs> it should be more like that. I see a lot of droids talk like that. A lot of politicians talk like that now. Exterminate. They're beginning to talk. <laughs> they all talk the same. No, no, no. no, no. I've, I've noticed that, that politicians speak and guards speak is beginning to merge. Yeah, but they're, I think, they, they talk radicals. But look, I think what happened was in the, in the late 80s, all of our politicians were brought out to the Virgin Islands, right? And they made droid versions of them. Like, so kind of we, like the Stepford politicians. And now we are run, run by droids. Because I, I have a, a fictional story in the future where <laughs> Ireland, after the apocalypse, is run by a droid called the Endobot. <laughs> Um, I want him back at this stage because he does say that oh yes we're all missing the old leaders now you know what I mean I but they don't want they doing I'm missing I am missing Andy no you can't no sorry no, please but, no. but, the, but my, my, here's my issue the, the annoying old droid that tells old people take your medication uh, you, you want another cup of tea don't you no you had one five minutes ago I, <laughs> can we do better than that can we do better than that well, I, I don't think so. I think our, our droid will be like our politicians. It'll just, you know, it'll be the sorry droid. We're, we're sorry. We're sorry. We're just sorry. But he fixed the fucking bottle. <laughs> <laughs> right, lads, I have to say thanks very much, Paddy, for coming in. I really yeah. appreciate you coming Thank in. Thank you so much. I hope it was Paddy, okay. Have guys. you anything coming up for the Christmas? Are you busy for the Christmas? I have. Um, I'm but the, My last show of the Ten Dark Secrets of the Irish Revolution, which I'm, I'm doing a book version of it, so I'm going to be working a lot on that. Uh, but my last show will be in Ballina on the 30th of November. Oh, no, oh, sorry, not Ballina. Ah. Castle Bar. I'm in the Linen Hall Castle Bar. So it'll be like the race is a Castle Bar. It'll be brilliant. Everybody come in there and enjoy it. And, and look out on paddycullivan.com for all my shows and different things I'm doing. And Paddy Cullivan Twitter. Uh, at Paddy Cullivan yeah so, uh, Paddy is a big Twitter user and he's, he's even bigger now with 280 characters and he is he is occasionally very funny so y you know I, I definitely kind advise he steals all my stuff <laughs> I rob it I rob everything well we do we, we're very appreciative that you came on that was a great chat and you, you've, you've informed us the historical context to why we are where we are is lovely to hear. Yeah, my favourite phrase, by the way, I did a, I released a song called We Are Where We Are back in 2010. People were using it so much. <laughs> the other songs on that EP, which is available on iTunes, <laughs> are We Have Lost the Run of Ourselves, We Are Living Beyond Our Means, and Shoulder to the Wheel. We yeah. missed Tighten oh, Your going, Belt. Oh, yeah, tight, tight, I, I had a song called Tighten my, Your Belt, but it just wasn't good enough. <laughs> you know, I, going Forward, I have a great one dedicated to Brian Cowan called I, Going I, Forward. I, 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 did see, I did see that this week. Which, uh, oh, the tweet was, I'm, I'm going to run for election on, on, a, on a promise not to make promises of using language that annoy people going forward <laughs> <laughs> um, right uh, just to finish off guys um, thanks for all the feedback positive and negative uh, some of the best ideas I have to say have come from our listeners um, mostly I have to say the female listeners have been the best ones that, and because the guys just tend to go that was great crack guys um, we, can, can I ask the people who are sending us the feedback just take two minutes to leave us a review, like us, subscribe, and add, add, add give us five stars on, on, on iTunes, please. I, I know it sounds like I'm begging, but the simple thing is, it'll He's actually begging. help us. Yeah. <laughs> It'll get us in a wider audience and it really would be great. We have some great guests lined up and I'm really grateful for the guests who've come in so far. Um, we, you can again follow us at, at Echo Chamber uh, on Twitter. You can email us at echochamberpod at gmail.com. And you know what, guys? Thanks very much for coming. I really enjoyed that. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, guys. Cheers, boys. See, talk to you soon, guys.